We are back for more ICD-10 CM coding guidelines. Today we're going to be going over diseases of the nervous system as well as diseases of the eye and adnexa. Hey, I'm Victoria. I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, national speaker, and content creator. And on my channel, I am here twice a week posting tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you be successful in a medical coding career. If this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, make sure you go back because this video is actually part of a series that I'm doing on ICD-10 CM coding guidelines. All right, now let's get into those ICD-10 CM coding guidelines. Chapter six is diseases of the nervous system, codes G00 through G99. A lot of it is pain coding guidelines, but we're gonna start with our dominant versus non-dominant sides. So codes from category G81, which is hemiplegia and hemiparesis, and then subcategories G83.1, monoplegia of lower limb, G83.2, monoplegia of upper limb, and G83.3, monoplegia unspecified site, identify whether we should have a dominant or non-dominant side that's affected. So should the effective side be documented but not specified as dominant or non-dominant and the classification system does not include a default code, this is the sequencing as far as non-dominant versus dominant in the code selection. If the patient is ambidextrous, the default should be dominant. If the side affected is the left side, the default is non-dominant, and if the right side's affected, the default is dominant. Category G89 is the category for pain, and codes in category G89, pain not elsewhere classified, may be used in conjunction with codes from other categories and chapters to provide more detail about acute or chronic pain and neoplasm-related pain unless otherwise indicated below. If the pain is not specified as acute or chronic, post-thoracotomy, post-procedural, or neoplasm related, do not assign a code from category G89. A code from category G89 should not be assigned if the underlying, which is the definitive diagnosis, is known unless the reason for the encounter is pain control or management and not, manage not management of the underlying condition. When an admission or encounter is for a procedure that's aimed at treating the underlying condition, such as a spinal fusion, a code for the underlying condition, not the pain, should be assigned as the principal diagnosis. And then in that case, no code from category G89 should be assigned because we're just treating that condition, not the pain. Category G89 is acceptable as a principal or first listed diagnosis when pain control or pain management is the reason for the encounter, such as a pain patient with displaced intervertebral disc, nerve impingement, or severe back pain presents for an injection of a steroid into the spinal canal. The underlying cause of the pain should be reported as an additional diagnosis if known. When the patient is admitted for the insertion of a neurostimulator, so that's a implanted device that sends a little tingling sensation to your nerves, and so instead of feeling pain, like intense back pain, you just feel this little tingle from the neurostimulator. Um, in that case, you assign the appropriate pain code as the principal or first listed diagnosis. When an admission or encounter is for a procedure aimed at treating the underlying condition, and a neurostimulator is inserted for pain control during the same admission or encounter, a code for the underlying condition should be assigned as the principal diagnosis and then the appropriate pain code would be assigned secondary. So use of category G89 codes in conjunction with site-specific pain, assigning category G89 on site-specific pain codes. Codes from category G89 may be used in conjunction with codes that identify the site of the pain, including codes from chapter 18, if the category G89 code provides additional information. For example, if the code describes the site of the pain but does not fully describe whether the pain is acute or chronic, then we can code both codes, then we can assign both codes. Sequencing of category G89 codes with site-specific pain codes. So the sequencing of category G89 codes with site-specific pain codes, including those in chapter 18, is dependent on the circumstances of the encounter or admission as follows. If the encounter is for pain control or pain management, assign the code from category G89 first, followed by the code identifying the specific site of the pain. 
For example, an encounter for pain management for acute neck pain from trauma is assigned code G89.11, which is the acute pain due to trauma, followed by code G54.2, cervicalgia, to identify that site then of the pain. If the encounter is for any reason except pain control or pain management and a related definitive diagnosis has not been established by the provider, assign the code for the specific site of the pain first, followed by the appropriate code from category G89. Pain due to devices, implants, and grafts will cover when we see section C19, which is pain due to medical devices post-operative pain. So the provider's documentation should be used to guide the coding of post-operative pain, as well as section three, reporting additional diagnoses, and section four, uh, diagnostic coding and reporting in the outpatient setting. The default for post-thoracotomy and other post-operative pain not specified as acute or chronic is the code for the acute form. So when we have routine or expected post-operative pain, like obviously if you just had a hysterectomy, you're going to have some pain in that area, that expected normal pain should not be coded additionally. Post-operative pain that is not associated with specific post-operative complications, so post-op pain not associated with a specific post-op complication is assigned to the appropriate post-operative pain code in category G89. If it is post-operative pain associated with a specific post-op complication, um, such as painful suturing or maybe even uh, an infection of some sort, maybe a hematoma, some kind of complication, that's assigned the appropriate code found in category uh, found in chapter 19, which is the injury poisoning and other certain consequences of external causes. So if it's appropriate, use an additional code from category G89 to identify the acute or chronic pain. Chronic pain is classified to subcategory G89.2. There is no time frame defining when we determine it to be chronic pain. We just use the provider's documentation to uh, guide that. So that if, the uh, if the physician says chronic pain, then it's chronic pain. Neoplasm related pain. Code G89.3 is assigned to pain documented as being related, associated, or due to cancer, primary, or secondary malignancy or tumor. This code is assigned regardless of whether the pain is acute or if it's chronic. This code may be assigned as the principal or first listed diagnosis code when the stated reason for that admission or the encounter is documented as pain control or management. And then the underlying neoplasm should be reported or the underlying cancer should be reported as an additional diagnosis. When the reason for the admission or encounter is management of the neoplasm and the pain associated with the neoplasm is also documented, code G89.3 may be assigned as an additional diagnosis. It is not necessary to assign an additional code for the site of the pain. Chronic pain syndrome, central pain syndrome, which is G89.0, and chronic pain syndrome, G89.4, are different than the term chronic pain, and therefore codes should only be used when the provider has specifically documented either of those conditions. So central pain sy syndrome and chronic pain syndrome are not the same as just chronic pain. Moving on to chapter seven, diseases of the eye and adnexa, starting with glaucoma. Assign as many codes from category H40, which is glaucoma, as needed to identify the type of glaucoma, the affected eye, and the glaucoma stage. So you could have different stages of glaucoma in different eyes. Bilateral glaucoma with the same type and stage. When a patient has bilateral glaucoma and both eyes are documented as being the same type, same stage, and there is a code for that stage and that type bilateral, then you report that bilateral code, which uh, is indicated with the, the seventh character for the stage. When a patient has bilateral glaucoma and both eyes are documented as being the same type, same stage, but that classification doesn't provide a code for bilateral, in that case you would report only one code for the type of glaucoma with the appropriate seventh character for the stage. If it's bilateral glaucoma and we have a, either a different stage or different types in each eye, so when they have bilateral glaucoma and they're not the same stage, not the same type, um, we have to distinguish which type and which stage is each eye. So if a patient has bilateral glaucoma and each eye is documented as having a different type, 
and the classification does not distinguish laterality, we would assign, um, for example, code H40.10 and H40.20, so one code for each type of glaucoma. When a patient has bilateral glaucoma and each eye is documented as having the same type but different stages in each eye and the classification does not distinguish laterality, assign a code for the type of glaucoma for each eye with the seventh character for the specified glaucoma stage documented for each eye. If a patient is admitted with glaucoma and during that hospital admission the stage evolves, um, assign the code for the highest stage that's documented. For an indeterminate stage of glaucoma, assign the seventh character 4 for the indeterminate stage and that should be based off of the provider's clinical documentation. The seventh character 4 is used for glaucomas whose stage cannot be clinically determined. The seventh character should not be confused with the seventh character 0, which is unspecified, which should only be assigned when the, we don't document anything regarding the stage of the glaucoma. If blindness or low vision of both both eyes is documented, but the visual impairment category is not documented, assign code H54.3, unqualified visual loss, both eyes. If blindness or low vision in one eye is documented, but the visual impairment category is not documented, assign a code from H54.6, which is unqualified visual loss, one eye. If blindness or visual loss is documented without any information about whether one or both eyes are affected, assign code H54.7, unspecified visual loss. Currently, Chapter 8, Diseases for the Ears and Mastoid Process, codes H60 through H95, do not have specific guidelines. So we'll pick up next week with Chapter 9, which is Diseases of the Circulatory System. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll get alerts when I post new episodes. I will see you in the next episode, and until then, just keep on coding on.